Well, good morning, church family. Welcome to March 7th, 2021, and our uh, Sunday morning Bible study here uh, with, with our life groups. Uh, thank you for joining us today, whether you're watching us on Sunday morning or whether you are uh, watching throughout the week. We are glad that you are have, have joined us. Um, I want to just uh, to say something to you before we begin today. First of all, um, I hope that the opportunity that we're taking to share these Bible studies is being something that is beneficial for, for, for many of you. Um, as you are still huddled down at home, uh, staying safe from uh, uh, being out in public and uh, uh, observing what you feel like is best for you and your family uh, there to uh, to stay uh, away from crowds and things like that. But I, I just want to encourage you. Uh, I don't want you to feel guilty by any means, but I just want to encourage you that uh, we need to have in our mind a a uh, uh, an end, if you will, to um, uh, to to getting back uh, into the flow of regular things as far as being a part of a church family. Um, now, whatever that may look like for you, um, you know that's completely up to you. I'm not like I said. I don't want you to feel <clears throat> guilty by any means or anything like that. But we are. Uh, are opening back up, have been open for a while, and uh, many of you are receiving the uh, the vaccine, and therefore um, your uh, things are, are are looking better for you. And we're seeing seeing that trend happening throughout um, our communities as well, as far as uh, <clears throat> the the number of of the COVID cases. Uh, but but it is still out there, and so by all means, you know, you continue to do what is best for you. But um, I just want to encourage you that one of the things that being a regular participant in a uh, church fellowship and being a part of community uh, like that is uh, is a habit for us in our lives. It's something that we get used to. It's something that we make a, a, a priority. We make effort into doing. And uh, we have gone for, for a, a whole year now. Uh, and uh, all of that has been disrupted. And so my prayer for us in a community and for our church is that we just won't get out of the habit of, of being a part of life groups and being a part of of, uh, of the church in that way. It's one way to, you know, to uh, look online and to watch uh, the broadcast on ABC 3340 and even, you know, even even coming just to, to worship service uh, there. But uh, uh, but I just want to encourage you when you feel ready, uh, we're here and we're excited about having you come back to life groups. So consider that. And if there's any way that I can, can help you with that, uh, just know, first of all, that I'm praying for us praying for you, praying for, for God to show you what his uh, direction is for you <clears throat> in your life uh, as you prepare to do that. And then uh, secondly, I, I'm here to answer any questions about what we're doing um, in our different uh, life group setting and the rooms downstairs, how we are uh, making efforts to, to disinfect in between classes uh, and all of that kind of thing. Um, you've got the opportunity to wear your masks uh, quite honestly, not everybody is doing that, and I know that that's one of the things that has been mentioned that is a little bit uncomfortable <clears throat> for some of you is that not everybody is observing that, and so, um, uh, but uh, but we encourage folks to do that. We do. Um, your staff will do that as well. But uh, uh, but I just want to encourage you to, to consider when it's going to be time for you to, to, to come back to life groups. And life groups are going to look a little bit different. Um, and uh, we may even be combining some just because um, uh, of the numbers and things like that. But as of right now, uh, we've got uh, life groups happening in each one of the worship services as far as the senior adults go. And um, if you have any uh, uh, want to... Your, your regular class that you were part of is not participating at this particular point. Uh, there is a place for you to come, and there's a place for you to uh, to get plugged in. Now, once your life group comes back, I would encourage you uh, to do that, to go back to that fellowship and that group of folks that you have grown to love and know so much. But, um, but if you're ready, uh, we're here. And so I just want to encourage you with that today. One other announcement I have before we begin is next Sunday is <clears throat> time change. We go... Uh, 
our um, uh, daylight saving time goes into effect. And so that'll happen next Sunday on the 14th. And so uh, make sure that the night before uh, that you change your clocks forward, move them forward, uh, and uh, uh, we'll be you know, the, the times will, will be affected by that. So make sure that you are uh, aware of that. All right. Well, this morning we, we began a brand new Bible study uh, a series, if you will, that has been entitled for us Essentials of Christianity. And uh, <clears throat> it's real neat that for us to uh, re-examine those things in our own lives, just to to, to lay down that foundation for us in these times of, of why we believe what we believe, what are the essentials, how does that look as far as being a follower of Christ. Um, you know, it's questions that the world asks all the time about uh, what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be a follower of Christ. I, I think there are two different aspects that they that many times people will, will want to know about Christianity, about that lifestyle of believing and following Christ. And, and one of them is just in wonder, you know, because I, I do believe that, that the world sees a difference in us as believers because it, um, it, it is not the, 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 the attitude, the heart of the world, if you will. It is more that that mimics Christ and who he is and, uh, and things. And it just looks different to the world. I, I know that I've been in situations and uh, one of those, uh, I'll just mention yesterday, I uh, uh, was uh, driving through Gardendale and uh, pulled up uh, by one of our local auto parts places and uh, they were sponsoring a car wash by one of our local ministries of uh, Teen Challenge. Uh, they've been a part of our church uh, many times in worship, and I really admire the, the ministry and, uh, of Teen Challenge and what, uh, uh, what they offer. Uh, and, and this particular group of ladies uh, were washing cars as kind of as a fundraiser for the ministry and, and as ministry to the community, and they do that every once in a while. So I love when I see that, and I just pulled in there to, um, to, to get my truck washed. And as I pulled in, uh, I, there was a couple of folks ahead of me, and so I'm sitting waiting. They greeted me as I came in, and they asked, uh, you know, if I wouldn't mind waiting. I said, sure, sure. So, uh, And it wasn't too long after that, another young lady pulls up uh, as well, and she uh, uh, was told that there were these cars that we didn't finish up, and then I was next, and then, uh, uh, then, then she could be next. And she just seemed real disappointed because she was uh, uh, she was in a hurry a little bit more and and uh, had somewhere that she needed to be or something like that. And I happened to overhear that, and I just simply rolled down my my, my window and I told them, I said, "Look, I'm uh, I was just passing by, and and I I don't I'm not pressed for time or anything. If this individual." Uh, uh, would like to, to go ahead and go ahead of me, then, then please, that's, that's fine. Do that, and, and I'll just sit here and wait. And so um, it just seemed to be um, unusual as that young lady kind of listened to me give her my spot, if you will. And uh, she just kind of was, are you sure? You know, I, uh, you know I, I, can, I can come back later. And of course, it was getting near the end of the day and they were about to go. So if she were to have to leave, there wouldn't be any coming back. And so I just said, no, no, that's fine. I'd love for you to do that. I'm just, you know, I'm just sitting here enjoying the sunshine, you know, and everything. And so she just went on a, on a couple of times uh, just thanking me and saying how unusual it was that somebody, you know, would do that. Um, a little bit later on, of course, these girls didn't know me from, from anything, but uh, it is a faith-based ministry. And as they uh, did get to me, and after the other young lady had, had finished, one of the girls commented to me and said, you know, asked me if I was, if I was a believer. And uh, I said, well, yeah, yes, I am. I'm, I'm a follower of Christ. And, and uh, she said, well, I, I, I knew it. There was something different about you, the way that you um, interacted with this young lady and with uh, offering her, you know, your spot and stuff like that. She said, that's just something that, that, that Jesus would do. And, um, you know, how neat it was to, to understand, not that I was, was pushing for that or anything, but when we, when we have that kind of heart, a heart of, of, of service, a heart of, of loving people, it just seems to be unusual in this world and how incredible 
that that is for us to consider and, and to think that that being like Christ is so unusual and it can it 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 is something that can be noticed. And so that's one of the things that uh, is is wonder about Christianity, what it's all about, what makes the difference. As a matter of fact, early on in the first century of the first generation of churches, um, that was one of the things that uh, that 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 folks weren't known as Christians at that particular point, but they were known as followers of the way. Followers of the way. It was that they were something different about the way that uh, that those people acted and those people were. So, you know, people ask those questions in wonder about Christianity. Another thing I think is more uh, another way that folks wonder about Christianity is that they are, you know, I don't know what the word is, but possibly, you know, they they just don't see how that uh, someone can believe. They they wonder. You actually believe that that God came to this earth uh, in the form of a man, and that he died on a cross, and that he rose from the dead. You know, they just it, it's that 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 not wonder, but I think just amazement that we would actually believe something that was so unnatural as far as what the order of things are happening in this world today, death itself, and even, even overcoming that. And so as folks ask questions, it's good for us to, um, uh, to, to, to shore up, if you will, the basis and the basics of uh, the essentials of Christianity and what that means. And so over the next seven weeks or so, we're going to be talking about several different things, exploring things like God's nature, uh, humans per uh, humanity's purpose, uh, what sin is, and what, what, what was the effect of sin on mankind. And of course, Jesus' death, resurrection, and his return, and also uh, looking at the work of the Holy Spirit. And after we finish these, um, these set of studies, hopefully, our prayerfully, that we'll be just a little bit more rooted in what the essentials of, of our faith is and the essentials of, of, of being a follower of Christ. So uh, as we begin today, I want to talk with you about the nature of God. If you've got your Bible and want to turn with me to John chapter 14, we're going to be in there this morning as Jesus is is uh, talking with his disciples. But uh, even the last couple of weeks, we've been, been looking in this area of scriptures, and one of the, the things that theologians call this is the, uh, uh, the farewell discourse of Jesus. It's what he has uh, chosen to, uh, to, to, to leave and to focus on during his last and final moments uh, with, uh, with his disciples and with the world before going uh, to the cross. And so John, um, uh, the apostle, the son of Zebedee and the brother of James, um, he more than likely wrote this, uh, this gospel and um, it was penned uh, by his hand, but through the unction of the Holy Spirit. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in just a few moments, but probably near the end of the first century. Uh, and um, therefore, uh, time-wise, it's, it's one of the last Gospels. It's the last gospel that was that was written, and so um, John in the first uh, the first twelve chapters he really focuses on the life and ministry of Jesus, and his whole focus uh, is um, to a universal audience. It's not just to believers. It's to it's to uh, believers and unbelievers, and he is just really focusing on establishing that Jesus is the Messiah, and the first twelve verses, uh, 12 chapters, uh, kind of focus, like I said, on his ministry, the life, the miracles, uh, the unusual life of Jesus because of the power that was within him, uh, the power of God manifested in him. And then the remaining remaining chapters chapters really focus on uh, the end of his life, the, the ministry uh, uh, leading up to the cross, uh, his death, burial, and resurrection, and uh, the authority of Jesus as a uh, as as the Son of God Himself, and so um, as we get ready to look in that just a moment to see how all of that works together in a very, very beautiful and very unique way of describing God 
in, in essence of who he is and revealing to us three different characteristics, three different attributes, three different uh, um, uh, personalities, if you will, but understanding they are all rolled into one. He is one God and one God only, but he has revealed himself and allowed himself to... Uh, uh, to be seen by us or known by us in three uh, different capacities. And we're going to look at that this morning for just a few minutes. Would you uh, pray with me as we begin? Father, we love you. <clears throat> we thank you so much for uh, your love and for the, the nature of who you are and that you have revealed <clears throat> that to us individually, but also you've revealed that to us as the world. So Father, I just pray this morning that you would speak to our hearts, that we would reveal to us through your Holy Spirit this morning a clear and present vision of who you are. We love you, Lord. Uh, bless us now as we study your word, and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Um, as, as I said, God has revealed himself to us as in three different attributes. God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit. Um, we, we see the power of God manifest in each one of those, in each one of those characteristics as Jesus uh, describes them even here about himself and about God uh, himself. And uh, there's a real neat picture for us to understand that. And I think I've shared this with you before, uh, either in Worship on Wednesday or in the life groups that I teach. Um, but it's it's a description of, of, of beautifully of, of what it means to try to understand the mystery surrounding the Trinity. God, God, three different attributes of God all rolled into one. And why very often he is spoken of and talked about and given three different names if you will, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, but he is still the, the same, the one God. Uh, you've heard it ex, uh, described also as the triune God, so it's the three three in one, if you will. Um, but uh, imagine myself, one person you see sitting here before you. My name is George, and uh, I am one person. I, I can't be different people, but I have different relationships, if you will, to folks in my life. Um, in other words, to, to my, my children, uh, Ashley and, and Mandy, I am their father. That's how they see me in life. They don't see me necessarily as a friend or a buddy, and I try to be those kind of things. But the very first way that I was introduced to them and in, in, in growing up and as they became you know, knowledgeable of life is I was their dad. I was their father that, that spoke things into their life. I was an authority. I was a protector. Uh, I was one that, um, uh, that um, uh, watched after them, uh, provided for them uh, in, 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 in their home, of course, Cindy and myself. And so we have that relationship and they view me as that. They don't see me like a, a uh, in any other relationship, I'm just, I'm their dad. And uh, so that's the relationship that, that I have with them. But to, um, uh, to my mom and dad, I was their son. And that was a whole different uh, set of, of a relationship um, uh, uh, focus, if you will, uh, because I was their son. They didn't see me as an authority. They saw me as someone that they, in time, they were the protector over. They were the provider over. And so, you know, the relationship that I had with my mom and dad was was that they saw me as their son. And no matter how old I got and how old they got, uh, it was always seen as that way and that relationship. Now, to my wife, Cindy, that's a whole different ball game. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not her father, and I'm not her child. Um, you know, I'm her husband. We are, we are, we are, 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 are co-parenting. We are, we, we do life together. We are husband and wife, and so th that's a whole different relationship. And the whole scope of what that relationship looks like is completely different than the others. Well. If we look at that same way uh, with our relationship with God, uh, we know that, that we see that same thing. I'm just one person. I'm George. I'm, I'm not, not anything else. But in those relationships, the scope of that relationship is, 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 is definitely unique to, 
to to that individual and to those you know to to that scope of the relationship. So that's how it is with God the Father. He is one God, but He has revealed Himself in three different attributes. He has given us, showed us that He is God the Creator, as the Father, the one who spoke the 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 universe, the world, life into existence itself. He He made that happen, and and He is He is the supreme being of all things, and He He is He is God, but Jesus. Uh, being the Son of God, He is God in the flesh. He was uh, uh, he, he was with God in the beginning. First uh, John uh, tells us that uh, that He was with God in the beginning. It's not something that God created; it didn't create Him. God just came into, born into humanity through uh, through a body that He that He in, inhabits, uh, and His name is Jesus, and He. His purpose and his relationship with us is that he was the sacrificial lamb for us. He came to to and claimed the authority of God, saw the authority of God, was the authority of God, and God making himself flesh took our sins upon himself as um, uh, as payment for what our sins had done, took death upon himself as payment for, for our sins. And so he is a savior. He is, we have that relationship with him. He is the one who paid the price for us. And then uh, the Holy Spirit, who um, God sent and, and, and afterwards, after Jesus' death, his burial and his resurrection, his ascension into heaven, he comes alongside us, if you will, and Jesus describes him in just a moment as we read as being a counselor or someone who becomes our conscience, becomes our uh, that new creation within us, that new way of thinking, what, what sin has, has uh, skewed and, and deformed in our life of, 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 of the way that we think, the way that we thought, the selfishness of mankind. Jesus comes through the Holy Spirit and he changes that inside of us and in our spirit. It's that connection, if you will. And so, but, but it is all the same. He is all the same. He is one God, but we see him in those three different ways. And so Jesus describes that. And as we look this morning at the nature of God, that's the thing I want us to see, is that what God looks like operating in our lives. First of all, he is He is spirit. He is everywhere. He is the supreme authority. He is the giver of life. He is life himself. And then he is Jesus, who was the sacrifice and that has now ascended into heaven and, and according to the scripture, is seated at the right hand of, of the Father, awaiting the time that, that, that he will return. And then God is the Holy Spirit living within us. And that's what makes the difference in our lives today when we become a follower of Christ. So as we look in John chapter 14, very familiar passage of scripture has just happened. Jesus has shared with the disciples that he was about to go away. And I tell you what, it's not part of our text, but let me just read that, if you will. John 14, 1, he's, he's trying to comfort the disciples uh, because they're asking questions. You're going away. You've been, um, uh, we've been with you in ministry for some three years now, and you say you're going away. What's that, what's that going to look like? And what do you mean you're abandoning us is what they're thinking. And so so Jesus is wanting to encourage them and let them know that no, what he's come to do in this world is he's come to die. And he's got to do that. And so what he's been doing all along is preparing those that will remain behind. And he's not going to leave them comfortless, but he's going to send the counselor, send the Holy Spirit to them that is going to empower them, that is going to give them boldness, it's going to give them understanding of the truth of God's word, and that same Holy Spirit that that was uh, was offered to the disciples or given to the disciples and given to the followers of Christ 
on that day of Pentecost, it's the same Holy Spirit that lives inside you and me today. And we operate and we live life under that authority and under that power and under that wisdom of the Holy Spirit if we just open up our our spirit and ourselves to him. So Jesus is speaking to disciples this, this very familiar passage of scripture. He says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms, and if it were not so, I would have told you. And I'm going there to prepare a place for you, and if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. And then... The disciples still had trouble getting it. After spending all this time with Jesus, watching him, seeing him, uh, seeing him do the wonderful miracles that he had done, raising uh, Lazarus from the dead, raising uh, 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 lame men to walk, and and uh, the healing powers that he had, and the miraculous things that he did, like you know the feeding of, of thousands of people with just you know two loaves or, or two fishes and five loaves of bread, and just things that are unexplained by by human nature together, but Jesus had authority and power over, and they saw this firsthand, and they still had trouble understanding who he was. And so Thomas kind of speaks up, and he says to Jesus after he has just said, you know, you know the place and where I'm going. And Thomas says, Lord, we don't know where you're going, and how can we know the way? And Jesus reveals what I believe is the essence of all of this that we're talking about today. He says to Thomas, and he says to you and me, he says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And then verse 7 says this, If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. What an incredible saying that Jesus is saying. He is revealing and saying to them, If you hadn't figured it out by now, I am God. I am. I and the Father are one. And uh, Philip, Thomas wasn't the only one with questions, but Philip said to the Lord at that time as well, he says, Lord, show us the Father and that'll be sufficient for us. And Jesus, I think, is still getting a little bit, not necessarily perturbed, but he's saying, don't you get it? And this is where we pick up in our scripture today. Verse 8 of John 14. Lord, said Philip, show us the Father, and that's enough for us. And Jesus said to him, have I been among you all this time, and you do not know me, Philip? The one who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who lives in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Otherwise, believe because of the works themselves. Jesus is saying, open up your eyes he says, you know, I've, I've walked with you. I've talked with you. You've heard me teaching. You've heard my words. And these aren't just my words. These are the words of the Father that are coming out of this physical body that, that I have in front of you. And I'm giving you these words and these teachings and this authority. And he says, he says, believe me by the words that I and the Father are, are one. And he said, and if that's not enough, just take a look at the works that we've done together, the works that I have done as far as the miracles, the uh, uh, the things, just showing that authority and the, and the power uh, of the universe that he has, uh, he, he spoke to the very oceans that was uh, a raging storm. And he said, peace be still. And immediately the, the, the waves were gone. I mean, the, not just authority over the way people act in spiritual things, but he has authority over the world that he created. And so he's, he's saying and he's asking them to believe that uh, just look by works alone, but, 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 but let's go a little deeper than that. The words that I share, that they're the Father's words, and they are the truth of that. So he's really petitioning before the disciples. He says, open your eyes. Don't think with your head but think with your spirit, think with your heart, the things that I've changed. And I think that's one of the things that causes the, the world to, uh, to ask those questions sometimes 
is that they're just not able to look beyond things that are, are seen right in front of them. And, you know, for whatever reason, the, uh, the God doesn't seem to be be actively, I mean, working in, in, in miracles around us so much. I mean, he is. They're, they're all over the place, but there there's just not he's not here in physical form to point to those and say, look, this is what, this is what God has done. And this is what God is doing. It's up to us to reveal those things in our life. And one of the greatest miracles that we have experienced in our life, some, some of you, I know we've talked and you've had some physical manifestations of miracles in your life where things uh, maybe the, that was in your body, that was sickness that was once there is gone now. And that's a miracle you know, of God. But the miracle in my life that I have to share with others is that I'm not the man I used to be. I don't have that selfishness in my heart uh, to that that is prominent. Now I have to fight against it because there is a there is a uh, a physical ma- uh, man inside of me, the natural man, if you will, that still craves those things. But I've been given authority over those in my life by the spirit man that lives within me, the spirit, uh, the, the Holy Spirit too, that 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 encourages me to take authority over those those things in my life. And I don't have to be selfish. I don't have to be out for what's in it for me. That that I can look and go through life at seeing what what good can I do? How can I be a blessing to people? How can I bring joy into people's lives on just a day to day basis? No matter uh, what what we do. And so there's a change in me and there's a difference in me. And that's one of the things that, that, that I can note of, of, of God's authority in my life. And so, uh, as Jesus is teaching here, he goes on in verse 16, skip down to there for me, for me, if you will. And he encourages and lets the disciples know that he's not going to leave them, uh, leave them, Uh, without that authority in their lives. And he says, and I will ask the father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. Now this is, Jesus is revealing that he's going to send a helper, going to send the Holy Spirit, if you will, that will come inside of us and come alongside of us and be our guide, be our our conscience, be our understanding of the truth of the Scripture, and give us authority in our lives as we as we minister. Verse seventeen, he says, "He is the Spirit of Truth. The world is unable to receive him because it doesn't see him or know him, but you do know him." because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me. Jesus says, I'm I'm going to go away. I'm dying. I'm going, and I will be, and I will ascend into heaven. But you will see me because I live. You will live too. And on that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. And so to answer the world's question of how do we know, how do we know that God is real? How do we, how can we believe in that? By faith, we have, we have taken that first step of exercising that belief in our lives and believing him to be our savior and to make that change. And because we've observed that in our life, because we felt that reviving of ourselves and we no longer feel um, the, the weight of sin because it has been taken off of us, then we can bear witness and say, it's simply this, you know, I, I can't open up, cut my cut my chest open and open up and show you God living inside of me, but I know he's there. I know he's there. He's made a difference in my life. And I no longer see this world as a place of despair by a means of just survival. I see it as an opportunity to be the hands and feet of the ones who created the one who created me and gave me life that I might glorify him, that my life might glorify him. And until someone takes that step of faith, then they're not going to see, they're not going to believe. And Jesus defined that right here. He says, they don't see me. They don't believe. They don't, they won't experience this, but you, because you have believed, 
then you will know what I'm talking about and you will experience that counselor, that love of the Holy Spirit. Stick, uh, skip down with me to 23. And Jesus continues to affirm that he and, and the Father are one. And I, that's the, the first the first. Uh, first example of of the essentials of Christianity is that the nature of God and who he is, that he is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Verse 23 says, Jesus answered, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. My Father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. The one who doesn't love me will not keep my words. The word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have spoken these things to you while I remain with you. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all these things and remind you of everything that I have told you. The Counselor is that person of the Holy Spirit that lives within us. And he is the one that gives us understanding to life. He, he shows us our purpose. He gives us, if we, if we ask him to, to show us understanding into God's word, Jesus just spoke it right here. He said, the words that I'm speaking that the Father gave me, the counselor, as it comes, the Holy Spirit is going to remind you and teach you all the things that I've ever told you. And that is, that is where we have the authority of God's word. Even John, as he is writing, we know and we believe that it's under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is reminding him of the words of Jesus. And he's sharing those and put those down in written form. And they have been something that have endured to this day. The word of God will never go away. Never go away because it's alive and it lives within our hearts. And that's the exciting thing about understanding the nature of God. Many people have a vision or an idea that God is up on his throne somewhere way up high and he's just watching this world pass by and he's being entertained by our struggles. But that is not our God. He is alive and he is well and he is living in me and in every person who's come to that faith knowledge of Jesus Christ by placing their faith in him. If this seems somewhat foreign to you, if you're listening to this study this, this morning or whenever you are, a couple of things that you need to examine in your life. First of all, have you ever reached that point in your life? where you've asked Jesus to come into your heart, where you have begun that relationship with him? Have you given him that authority over your life? Have you come to that point where you said, Jesus, I need you as a savior and I want you to, I want you to come into my life. Have you invited the Holy Spirit to come into your life? You know, it's not something just happens. It's not just something because we're God's creation that just happens. We must make an invitation. We must make that decision. We must repent and we must confess. That's what the scripture says. Repent means to stop that way of life that you're living now, to stop having those thoughts of, of, of just selfishness for man, but for, for yourself, but to, to stop uh, uh, living for yourself and begin living for Jesus and living for others. That's the repentance. And the confession is just live a life and confess that I'm a follower of Christ. I'm a, I, I, I believe. I, I, I trust God as my Lord and Savior. I trust Him, and, I, and I'm walking in faith with Him. And by the authority of God's Word on those things, the Holy Spirit comes into your life, and you live with Him. So if you've never done that, I'll give you the opportunity to do that today. Or perhaps it's just been a long time since you've nurtured the relationship with the Lord and he just seems distant to you. You know there was a time that you invited him into your heart, but you just never have, you just haven't nurtured it in a while. Then my prayer to you is to, to just turn back to the Lord. Confess that sin of, of, of not 
not nurturing that relationship and asking God to take those things out of your life that are keeping you from hearing the Holy Spirit in your life. And as you do that, God will always reveal himself to us. So bow your heads right where you are if, if you'd like to make this decision. Just say, Father, I, I don't think that I've ever come to the point in my life where I've invited you to change my life. And so right now, Father, as I'm just as I'm listening to this and I'm hearing, I'm hearing a, a, a call from something somewhere in my heart to make this change, I acknowledge that it is you drawing me to yourself. So, Father, right now, I repent of my sin. I don't want to live a selfish life. I don't want to live the way that I've been living without you. I want you to make a change in my heart, make a change in my life. Help me to see things better, see things different, see things more like, like you designed me to do. So I confess those things. And right now, I just I, I also confess that you are my Lord, and I will follow you. I will get to know you by studying your word, and I will seek you on a daily basis. You are my Lord. Father, thank you for coming into my heart. Thank you for giving me new life. And as I take this step of faith, reveal yourself to me that I might know that I know that I know that I'm a child of yours. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, it's the attitude of your heart, or perhaps you prayed another, just, Lord, help me to nurture that relationship with you, to, to, to fall in love with you again, then, then I want you to do me a favor, and I want you to just connect with me somehow. Call me, uh, the church office, talk with me for just a moment. Let me know that you've done that. I want to I wanna help you with that. Or send me an email uh, if you want to do that as well, just to, just to express that that is what you're doing in your life. And allow me to reach out to you and offer you some, some help as well uh, about getting started in that relationship and in that nurturing relationship with the Lord. Well, the nature of God, He is... He is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, all three rolled up into one, and He is living within us as followers of Christ. And that is, that is the first essential, if you will, of Christianity, of knowing that who He is, but also knowing that who we are in Him. Well, all right, thanks for joining me today. My prayer for you this week is that the Lord would bless you and that he would uh, just continue to, you would continue to grow in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is a good father. We'll see you next week or, or join us for Bible study uh, here at uh, the North Campus for Life Groups, okay? God bless. Have a great day.